Hello, everybody. Welcome to our thoughts on this. This episode, we are talking about comic books and their barrier to entry, whether that's the physical comics themselves or the film adaptations of them. I'm Alex. I'm <laughs> And I'm Ali. No, so, I think it works. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's start off by talking about the biggest question, which is DC versus Marvel. And I think the best way to answer that is by getting your guys' opinion on just who do you enjoy more story-wise, DC or Marvel? And let's start with Drakari. So right now... Jeez, honestly, probably neither. <laughs> but if I, if I okay, are you me. more of a... a image or a dark horse um i mean right now i've been reading the power ranger series that boom is putting out and okay. i'm probably like right now yeah boom is putting out a lot of cool stuff um i think image yeah image too because i recently read Sokka and that was really good but um i think indie comics right now are kind of where it's at because like the main two just kind of right, like they're just <laughs> flopping around like fish out of water so <laughs> right right yeah but if i had to pick between the two i'd probably say marvel is probably what i'd go for you know typically so yeah but no you bring up a great point of indie comics which i think is probably one of the lowest barriers to entry wouldn't you say because each indie comic doesn't really have a lot of crossover with each other yeah it's for sure easier to get because like most of them are pretty contained stories like there's like there's stuff like with robert kirkman's work where it will be like where it can be intertwined or whatever with like invincible and stuff like that but usually it's like these individual you know stories that you can kind of just jump into from the number one and, and go till it ends or if it already finished just pick up the omnibus if they put that out so it's like it's super easy just to pick those up okay nice okay i'm um, sorry but you were saying when it came to dc or marvel oh i was saying marvel is probably what i pick up i think their characters are more you can relate to them a little bit easier because i feel like dc's characters are so grand in scope it can be hard to just like connect to them on a human level sometimes okay that makes sense and so when it comes to dc or marvel what uh specific storylines or characters do you tend to follow mm. well for marvel um you know i'm a big spider-man guy so probably been spider-man like from my life really just followed him i think the gotcha. ultimate spider-man run was when i kind of really was like okay comic books are cool um miles miles morales is like his full introduction was another time where i was like, really in depth to it um i've been there i think like my first big like because i have a lot of like just back issues from the 90s and 80s and stuff but the first storyline that i think i really like followed and like loved a lot with matt fraction david Hodges, like hawkeye run it's only like i think 11 or 12 issues but it's like i don't know just something about the portrayal of hawkeye is just super dope i like it a lot so that's probably my favorite comic book like of all time and then um yeah i mean there's others there's other i think other storylines that i think are just really good between those but mainly the those are the ones that stand out like the david Aja and matt fraction one okay makes sense jason uh, what is your relationship with comic books yeah, so starting with comic books, you know, I am very, like, a mercenary, bro. I'm for whatever, wherever it is, I'm down with it. Um, I'm a big fan of, I think I can kind of describe it as I'm a fan of Marvel's characters more, but I like DC's writing a lot more, especially with the current stuff Marvel's putting out. Um, I'm looking at you killing Kamala Khan off in a random <laughs> comic that has nothing to do with her. It is Spider-Man comic of, no, of all things, but um, destroying yeah, ben Riley's <laughs> yeah, destroying Ben Riley, one of my favorite characters from the '90s. You're destroying him. Bro, just give him his hoodie back. <laughs> it desecrated they took his, his hoodie? corpse for two months. They took his yeah, hoodie. Yeah, they took his hoodie anymore. They took his hoodie from him, gave him that terrible chasm outfit. Yeah, um, they took his hoodie. Him, him, they turned him into Kane and made him all angsty. Yeah, mm-hmm. Kane doesn't even wear a scarf anymore, so <laughs> it's all fucked. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. gotcha. it's, it's all lag. 
And okay. with DC, you know, I, I like DC's writing a lot more, especially with this current Batman run. I've been, I, I mean, I've been really liking Batman since, the, since um, uh, the DCU. I think mm-hmm. it was. Which one? Uh, um, DC. Uh, uh, DC. It was. It, are you talking of Infinite Frontier or DC Universe? Oh, uh, after, after New Fifty Two. After New Fifty Two, then there was, was the Rebirth. DC Universe. Tom King. Yeah, uh, New Fifty Two. Yeah, then there was are. New uh, Rebirth. Then there was DC Universe. Then Infinite Frontier. Yeah. So whichever whichever one didn't have Jim Gordon as Batman, starting with from like 2011 onward. Okay, I that's that Rebirth. Run. I thought that was. Okay, that's Rebirth. Yeah. So then, yeah, I like DC Universe. Makes sense. Um, yeah, I did not like Rebirth at right. all. <laughs> yeah, so, the whole point of... Like... Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, um, I don't like that. I'm very heavy into Batman. I'm trying to get out of that because, you know, God, everybody reads Batman. There's a lot of better, a lot more interesting excuse me, characters to, to read into, but they've been struggling to pull me. And like um, Tricari was saying earlier, indie comics, Radiant Black. I've read some yes, Radiant dude, Black. Radiant Jordan, Black is so good. Really good. So, okay. Yeah, no, nice. that's where I'm at. And so you'll read anything is what you're saying. Uh, yeah. I'll read Do you read indie comics? Uh, so not as much as I really want to. I should read more. Like the last, like besides Radiant Black, the last indie comic I read was the Cyberpunk 2077 tie-in <laughs> comics. Um, okay. Because I got them for really cheap. Gotcha. So, on okay. Comicsology. Okay, gotcha. Oh, that is a good point. We'll bring that up later. But getting on to Ali, I don't know. Ali, do you have a lot of experience reading comic books? Or is all of your knowledge of comics from television and film? It's mainly from television and film and like watching like YouTube. Um, right now I'm reading um, Invincible um, in anticipation for the, the next season. Uh, yeah. uh, whenever that comes out. <laughs> okay. But, um, <laughs> and so yeah, when, my, when it comes to uh, TV and yeah. film, what do you lean more towards? DC, Marvel, all of them? Um, it's mainly been like the DC animated universe that I've watched growing up. Um, I can't really like think of much Marvel. When you say DC animated universe, do you mean the actual series um under the yeah. umbrella of dc animated universe or are you talking yeah uh, even before that with like justice league or uh, batman beyond that type of stuff no like under under the umbrella okay, of that. and also static shock i love that show yeah okay <laughs> oh, gotcha. um but yeah when i was younger i did read a couple comics but um it was mainly dc that i read growing up and then uh for some reason i stopped um and getting back into it has been hard mainly because like i don't know what exactly to read yeah Yeah. it's like there's there's so many storylines like you can't really just like pick up a comic and just start from there yes that is an incredible point and i do want to get back to that um but really quickly i will give my background and then we can get right to that point so i have been exposed to comics for as long as I can remember, whether that be through television or film. Like some of my earliest like memories are watching Batman the Animated Series and pretty much anything DC, anything Marvel that's ever been made, I'll watch. And when it comes to comic books specifically, I originally started collecting Marvel and realized that I just didn't like the way that Marvel like laid out their stories or uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later but I I like the way DC's editors and all of their like whole universe fit together and so I've really switched to DC mainly Batman but I've been branching out recently getting into Green Arrow and Hawkman and that type of stuff but yeah for me specifically it's Anything film and television, I'll watch, and it's all DC comics the whole way for me. 
are you reading like newer are you, are you like solely reading newer stuff or are you going back reading like old runs so yeah when it comes to what i'm reading right now it's a bit of both and when i say going back i don't think i've read anything before maybe 88 mm, okay. um i think yeah. that's the first thing i read like that's the oldest thing i've read really well that's, I, guess, I guess that's not true I have read a significant amount of Supermans of the Silver Age, mm, okay. which are, yeah. I believe, 60s and 70s, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think so. <laughs> and so, but yeah, all the stuff that I've been reading recently, it's um, anywhere from the 90s to today. Like, okay. I'm going back and reading, I'm trying to collect the original uh, Green Arrow series. And because the original Green Arrow series, interestingly enough, started in 89 for a character that was introduced in the 50s. He didn't have his own series until 89. Yeah, I know for a long time. Wasn't he paired with a Green Lantern for a little yes, bit? Yes, he was. Um, well, that was hard traveling heroes, right? Yeah, because yes. like, yeah, very um, good run too. Yes. Green Arrow is like a huge liberal and <laughs> Hal Jordan's like a military man. <laughs> yes, yes. And so... Um, I've been trying to collect those and read those. And then, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, just the other week I went out and I got uh, Riddler Year One, which is um, just released last month. So anywhere in between is stuff that I'm reading. I've read almost the entirety of New 52 through um, Superman and Batman, but none of the other characters really. Um, but yeah, it, it that's kind of what I've been reading. Yeah. Was that how was how was reading New Fifty Two Superman? <laughs> Very I remember that interesting. Being... Yeah. <laughs> Very New interesting. Superman is just Man of Steel Superman, right? Pretty much. Yeah, so much for most Angry part. at yeah, everything. Much. Yeah. So um, it's interesting. But to Jason, to something Jason was saying earlier, and I think it's a good point to talk about the barrier to entry, and something that I think that Ali might have kind of alluded to but didn't come out and straight straight out say was reading comics is an extremely expensive hobby right just because oh, yeah. of recently um just that uh just reading comics has become more generally accepted and so now getting your hands on older stuff is harder because people are realizing that they can make money off of it now and so, which is the way it's always, I mean, it's been that way for a long time, but I think recently within like the last 15 years, That's it's really taken off. Too now. I yeah. feel like yeah. most hobbies are getting like, sure. video sure. game collecting right now, hellscape, dude. Right, right, exactly. And it's the same way that it's been like trading cards have done this from like the very beginning. And so um, it's just, everything's catching up. But Jason reads primarily, if I'm not mistaken, on online and digital issues where i almost read i read pretty much nothing online i have to have the physical issue because i enjoy having it like having it with me to look through the art and read the pages and th that's just the way that i have to read comic books i i just don't enjoy them if i read them online but i want to get back to jason's point um of comicsology how do you feel that reading online compares to uh, reading a physical book and do you think it's cheaper than getting hard copies and I, this goes out to anybody um well i, I could answer first because this is some of two minds with this right if it was up to me i would always prefer to have the physical media of that way about my video games like i buy video games digitally but if i'm looking for anything a game i really 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 like or i know i'm gonna like i'll buy digitally i mean physically i'm sorry um but in the comic space, because like you're alluding to earlier, it's so hard to get those older comics, and so many of them now are just publicly available to pirate if you're into that, or to buy on Comicsology or something like that. Or what is it, Marvel Unlimited, DC Universe? I think is the name of the apps. So yeah. I'm kind of like that. That's kind of my preferred method to do it. And also, I can speak. I, this is something I know somebody like Ollie can speak. Comics are so confusing now. 
of there's just so much coming out all the time from the big two. And then you have lots of indie comics where I kind of get uh, lost in the proverbial sauce, if you will. Um, just kind of <laughs> confused about like, whoa, is this Batman the current Batman? Thinking, what time does, like, where does Detective Comics take place? Oh, Batman and Detective Comics, yeah. the same Batman, but written completely differently sometimes. So is it a monthly, I kind of just, like weekly? Stuff like that. Yeah, once monthly, once weekly. So I'm just like, you know what, I'm just going to, Catch it online. If I'm interested in seeing it, I will. Yeah. If I'm not, it's whatever. Um, and that's kind of where I where I am. I I would always prefer physical media if I could, but there's just so much. Like right. at least with manga, I know. Which I want. I do want to talk about manga versus comics. Is at least with manga, I know I'm gonna get a new. Ch- there are weekly manga. I don't read weekly manga. All the manga I um, read are monthly, so I know like every month. Uh, 15 or whatever i'm gonna get a new freaking dragon ball book or something you know gotcha okay um and so would you say that reading online is easier than getting the uh, physical copies due to the fact that everything is so readily available versus having to like track down and like find these books and you don't know which order they're in where comiXology and dc universe or marvel unlimited all of those will present them to you in order at your fingertips i think so dead if, if you're gonna buy so i think if you're a first time comic book reader, i think it's better to go to the store to have somebody explain to you what you're reading so you're not in the store buying new 52 and we're on infinite frontier you know I right. think if you're a more experienced comic book reader and having a physical medium doesn't really matter to you, I would always say go digital, dude. Just doesn't take up the space in the house. You know, you can, <laughs> you can have thousands and thousands of comic books, some of them sometimes included with a subscription free to read that you can try to get into. And if that's your thing, then I think that's the better option. Makes sense. Um, Trikari, do you read a lot of uh, comics digitally? Are they all um, hard copies? How, what are you reading? Um, I think for me, I'm going just both, really. Like, I think it just depends on like, my access. Like, do I have a comic book store near me? Do I feel like going? <laughs> do I feel like getting a book? And, gotcha. like, That's the biggest like, question. It just kind of depends on like, the moment I'm in. <laughs> like, if it's like 6 a.m. and I'm just like, I'm going to read something, just see something like, Google Books, and I'm like, okay, I'll check. Because that's how I started reading um, Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil run. I just picked it up on um, Google Books, and then like I slowly transitioned over to like, okay, here, well, here's when the physical issue is coming out. So you know, it's just like depends on the mood I'm in, really, like, and just how accessible it is for me to get a physical, you know. So sure, that makes total sense. Ali, um, I know you said you're reading Invincible. Is that the physical printed like? volumes like volume one two and three are you reading those digitally yeah that's the physical volume one okay um also really expensive sixty dollars except no seventy dollars yeah. did you buy the big omnibus of it? i'm sorry did you buy like the big omnibus with all the issues yeah oh, i believe okay. it's broken into three volumes though if i'm not mistaken yeah. Even the omnibus is broken up into three separate mm-hmm. things. I've seen them in person. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen them in person too. They're huge books, but yeah, yeah. spending seventy per book, you're spending over two hundred dollars for the whole series. Isn't yeah. the Walking Dead omnibus like huge too? The Walking Dead. Oh, the Walking Dead one is gigantic. Yeah, the Walking Dead one is freaking yeah. a monster. Is it's still going. Like but, the, the show. The show is. No, the show's the show. ending. They're starting a new show, though. But, yeah, oh, yeah. That's off topic. Place. That's off topic. Yeah, but, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I choose to um to like read like not digitally, um physically. Damn, that's the word. I choose to read physically because like I have bad eyes, for one, and like looking at a screen all day. That's that's not helping me. Sure. Um. And also, like, I might have ADHD because, like, I can't focus enough if I'm, like, reading on my phone. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just, like, eventually I'll go up to something else or, like, I'll get a notification. Um, but, yeah, I, 
And I think having it like in front of me is is a lot better for like if I'm like really trying to get through it. Um, I'll I'll probably like get through it faster if it's like physically in front of me. Sure, sure. No, I I, I totally understand that. Um, okay, so with that being said, I do think that we should get more into the distinction of DC versus Marvel before we talk about the barrier to entry with their comics and film adaptations and this is coming from my own personal opinion and i'm going to open it up for you guys to either uh, agree disagree say whatever you feel but i believe that when it comes to comics marvel is probably the easiest to enter and when it comes to film and television dc is probably the easiest to enter and that's coming from the fact where Marvel likes to present their stories all self-contained in a way where if one run of, uh, let's say you're reading Spider-Man, everything's going to be contained within that Spider-Man run. And if you see a Spider-Man, if you, if you see Peter Parker in an X-Men series that comes out the same month, there's no guarantee that it's the same Peter Parker of the Spider-Man series that came out the same month because all of those stories are self-contained. And so it's a lot easier to be, um, it's a lot easier to enter, because if you want to pick up a series, you know that you can pick up this series, and it'll, you you'll, you might be missing some backstory, but mm. you'll essentially have the um, whole story laid out in front of you, um, <clears throat> and it's not going to be super hard to track down and get all those crossovers, where DC Comics everything is one massive universe and so every character crosses over into every other storyline and so what that's what i prefer typically because like if i pick up a batman comic and i see hawkman in it i know it's the same hawkman from the series i was just reading and i don't have to worry what are these hawkman's experiences or what is that because i know what those experiences are through reading the other series. And I think it's the exact op opposite for film and television because DC has really focused on creating separate, what they're calling Elseworld projects, where nothing really crosses over, except for The Flash tried to do a little bit of crossover, um, where Marvel has pretty much had one consistent timeline since 2008 with Iron Man. What are your guys' opinions on that? Um, I think I think I kind of disagree. Okay, like, sure. So you were saying that Marvel is easier for comic, well, for comics to get into. Yeah. And then you're saying that for the movies, DC is easier to get into. Yes. I mean, I think like, so yeah, I do think I think I disagree on the movies. I think the comics, I still disagree with Marvel, but I think I. I think for the comics, I still agree, but I think I agree for different reasons. Because I feel like, I feel like DC has the same problem that Marvel has as far as like, is this character like the same character that like, I like I guess I'm confused on like, do you mean like it's a, like the same like interpretation or like or do they mean like the same character from the same universe that would you're like yeah kind of um like where Marvel has self-contained stories yeah and um. The, those characters within their stories, they don't necessarily have the same experiences as the same character in a different story, right? Yeah. And so I think that's easier because you don't have to worry about having to know all of these crossovers and all of these um, yeah. different like things that have happened to this character in the past because they might not have necessarily happened. You don't have to worry about having read those. Yeah, I think that I think that can be. I think DC has that problem too, because like if you look at character like Jonathan Kent, where it's like if you like missed a few issues, suddenly he's an adult. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So it's like so I think I do think Marvel has less of that issue, so I do agree in that sense. But as far as the movies go, I think I think the real only I think Marvel might be easier because like I think outside of length and like you know, and if you go on Disney Plus, like they haven't all listed out like. Here's when this one takes place, and here's when this one takes place. Right, and right. I think the movies are 
pretty good. The event, the Avengers movies are pretty good at saying this is everything you, that happened, you know, like, like the here, like not a recap necessarily, but they are good at saying this is what happened and this is why we're here, basically. You know, I don't think so, they give recap. I think recently these movies have come out basically expecting the audience to have seen all what is it now, 26, 27 movies mm-hmm. in the back catalog. And I definitely have five of the new ones. I think Endgame, though, like everything before Endgame, I feel like was pretty like, if you miss a few, you'll be fine. You know what I'm saying? But like, I definitely see your point about the more recent part. So. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I kind of have almost the opposite opinion. I feel like DC Ooh. is uh, of Alex, I should say. Like, DC <laughs> okay. is much. I'm sorry. I didn't. I should have clarified that before I started speaking. Yeah, I guess um, <laughs> um, that DC has a much. It's much easier to get into DC Comics because DC Comics, they kind of they reset. Well, the one thing I don't like about Marvel is because of their sliding time scale, yeah. which it, it's good, but they don't, it, makes, it makes it easier for them. But like You see a Peter Parker who's like, what? He looks like he's 28, and he's yeah. been through Clone Saga, Superior Spider-Man, all that stuff. And he, what, in the span of like, what, three years? Yeah. Insane. Yeah. And what I do like about DC is DC does, which I haven't done as much recently, but DC does go like, all right, it's time to reset. We're, we're right. going to start again. This is a new era. Um, and while they don't really try to, I think the New 52 did a bad job of this. But in the past, they wouldn't reset all the progression that a character went through. So that's the they thing I don't like. Yeah. I, that's the thing I don't enjoy about that, though. Like, It's basically them saying, it's basically them throwing their hands up and giving up like okay whatever you like is canon whatever isn't isn't you know what i'm saying it just, it's not like like with some like new 52 well, i don't think new 52 even if you look at like any of the crises where they were just like okay guys whatever you like is canon and whatever isn't isn't and it's up to the writer just to figure it out you know so i feel like a lot of times when they do these like events where they're just like okay time to start over guys it's just like they're just doing it there's no like plan really and it's just them kind of being like We've messed everything up now. <laughs> so, right. I think that happens no I matter agree. what. Like, just because, you know, these, when something goes on for so long, that's just going to yeah. happen. Yeah, and, like, um, you've had something go on for freaking 50 years, or 60 years, or 80 years mm-hmm. of comic book history. It, it, you're bound to contradict yourself to, uh, for characters to act completely differently. Across yeah. multiple runs, sometimes within the same run. <laughs> um, so I, I feel like that happens, but with Marvel specifically, I think it's hard because, first off, can y'all tell me when did Superior Spider Man happen? That happened in 2013? 13? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it was I, early 2010s. I, yeah, it was, it was mid, yeah, mid, early, mid 2010s. I didn't find out that happened until 2018. Some of you are confused. I went to the comic book store to go pick up a Spider-Man book, and I was like, why is Spider-Man ripping people's faces off? What? This is not the Spider-Man I know. Yeah, it was 2013. Yeah, so I'm confused. I'm like, God, what's what's going on? And then I had to to go through the whole Parker Industries and see all that Mm -hmm. crap. I'm like, oh, man, this this sucks. This sucks. (laughs) This is not, like, I don't, this is not the character I want to see. I feel like Marvel does that all the time. Um, Marvel does a, does a really thing where they like to just completely change characters for no reason. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I, I feel like I the do most consistent it. character yeah. is Captain America in Marvel. Oh, easily. Yeah, easily. yeah, he's the most. Everybody else freaking. The only thing that yeah. him and the Punisher. The only thing that changes for them is the war. I don't know what's gonna happen to Punisher now. There hasn't been a war in forever. He, he was well, in Ukraine. He was in the Russian Revolution. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I think like what you're saying. I like I I don't really see that. I think with Marvel though, it's just like because they've only had one significant. They've only had one big like wide scale company like start over, and that was Secret Wars in 2016, right? And so, that sucked. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Well, that being Doctor Seem Doctor Doom finally become God was kind of cool. So yeah. <laughs> the whole white they, they, they were half measures, bro. Like, bro, if you're gonna do it, go all the way. Don't do it. Don't yeah. give me half of it. Yeah, you can't, like, you I would... have to, like be God and then become Iron Man afterwards. <laughs> yeah, like bro, give me the full, full rundown. Like if you're gonna yeah. do a universe reset, reset the universe. 
I think yeah. Marvel desperately needs it more than anybody else. Hey, seeing how Secret Wars went, I don't think they should. I think there's ways to fix their, fix their universe without doing like a massive reboot. Like, I mean, I think me personally, like, I know they're necessary, but I just think, like, I've been burned by how many times DC is done. Because D- I feel like DC just says, yeah, got-. they'll just be like, yeah, I got to starting over. Because Flashpoint wasn't even supposed to be a reboot originally. It was supposed to just be like a story, right? And then they were just yeah, like, okay. Yeah, it was so this popular. Little- they were like, yeah, let's do, like, let's, let's do it, guys. So, but like, I feel like Marvel's issues are easier to fix than DC's issues. Because Marvel doesn't make a whole big thing of the multiverse as much as like DC does, I feel like. But oh, uh, like not according to our movies, freaking garbage movies. Oh yeah, everything is because oh, the multiverse. But oh, yeah, God. I yeah, I don't know. Okay, so I want to recap. Trikari, uh, you agree that Marvel is the easiest, um, or the lowest barrier to entry for comic books. Jason, you said it's DC. Yeah. Okay, and so why do you say it's DC? I don't think we ever got uh, to that. So I, I'm saying why is this saying DC is because DC does a good job of having number ones that you can kind of just start from. So like if you want to start, like if you want to read the Infinite Frontier Batman, you can go to his run number one and well, have its legacy number, and then you can kind of start from there and learn about the character. And if you ever want to catch up, if there's things you don't understand, you can go read those old things. But if you want to read Spider Man. And they're talking about Ben Riley. You have no idea what about the Combs conspiracy or <laughs> yeah. any of that. You have to go and find those books from the '90s or read them digitally, sure. and kind of go through that whole process. Sure. Which is like what I don't like about okay. their um, stuff as much. Okay. I do so, think, oh, no, go ahead, Trigger. I was just gonna say I do think some of that is a process of how like because DC just be canceling books, bro. They'll just be like, okay. Here's a new book. Wait, it's canceled. Sorry about that. Well, that's because nobody buys comic books, but yeah. that's a whole different conversation. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but <laughs> okay. Um, I I want to talk about what Jason just said, which is, you think DC is easier to enter because of how often they reset their universe, right? Yeah. And because they're resetting their universe so often, you know that the start of the universe isn't so far away that you have to go back years and years in order to there's, in, there's endings and beginnings right which I like yes about the totally however what about the original like the original continuum of dc which started in what was it um uh the 1935 with superman or action comics and didn't reset tr- fully until uh, 2006 that's a huge amount of um comics to go back like what if i wanted to start at like 1970 batman i would have to know what happened to him for the last 35 years uh, i i do, i do think that's an issue but i mean can't you say the same for anybody on marvel side if you want to understand luke cage power man you're gonna go all the way back to 1980s power man and it read no, I mean, heroes for like, higher i feel like similar to what you're saying like Marvel still has number ones. Like Marvel still only has like a. I think their longest is still like Amazing Spider-Man. Like so, I think they like Marvel still like, like I, I get what you're saying in the sense that these characters aren't necessarily like entirely starting over and they have established histories. But I think it's the same for DC and kind of how we talked about how when they reboot, it's like this story is like like Nightfall. Nightfall happened forever ago, but Nightfall is still like because everyone likes it, it's still like an integral part of Batman's character. Like it's still happening, you know. So, mm. I don't think they talk about Nightfall yeah. even close to enough. But it's no, still like, they, they, but it's still a they, thing they that happened then. Like uh, the main difference, I can say, is like they don't talk about it anymore. Like there's stuff that we know happened in Batman's. Like was it like in New Fifty Two? When New Fifty Two started, it was supposed to be Batman's only been Batman for like ten years, but he's had three mm-hmm. Robins and his son Damian mm-hmm. Wayne is, is like like something that. Like that. Yeah. yeah, that's the stuff I don't like. And yeah. what I do like is when they're like. um opposite of what's going on in spider-man recently where i'm very like oh man you know this character from the 90s let's bring back bill riley's or bill riley's <laughs> and riley's corpse and desecrate it for the next time the up team time you know you love that and i feel like what dc does is they're like okay guys we're gonna reset what well, are some stuff that you do need to know like batman's parents got shot in the alley there's stuff that mm, we can ignore right. um and i think what Marvel does is all of it is important. 
which is right. which is like part where it makes it hard right. because I'm not gonna see here. I'm not gonna read. Like, <laughs> dude, I'm not gonna read <laughs> Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> 60. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna read at all. I don't read that. Um, but you know, it's just so much stuff. Yeah, I yeah. do have a question for Ollie. So like, because obviously, because obviously we like seem to be more like into this. So like, I know Ollie said when Ollie always talked about reviews. I don't want to say that, but like, from hearing how we're discussing Marvel and DC and like the pros and cons of each of their universes and how to start to you what seems easier to be like okay like i could start with dc or marvel like which one seems like okay i could start with this one you know or do they both seem uh, just like a lot of stuff i'm i'm thinking i'm, I'm gonna go with jason on uh dc being easier mm-hmm. just because like yeah. how he said it like they have restarted so much that like you can just go back to one of those restart points okay. and and yeah, and then carry on from there. Sure. I but, do want to um, ask Alex something. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're... No, go ahead. Yeah, but, but with what Alex was saying, like, if you want to, like, go far back, me personally, I don't think I'd want to go that far back. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and I don't think a lot of people yeah. are, especially if they're getting into comics, they most likely want to get, like, into the newer yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying, but I think when people, like oh, I want to get into comics, they ask, like, what's the best story to read? And people will tell mm-hmm. them, they're like, oh, you want to read a, a Batman comic? You got to read The Killing Joke. But to read The Killing Joke, you need to know everything that came before it. You need to know who Jason is, yeah. who Barbara is, who uh, Batman yeah. is, and, like, that's a lot. I mean, I do feel well, like, I, they're, I like with some of those characters, oh, you can go, Jason. I've been talking a lot. All right, no, I was, I was going to say, I'm sorry, I cut you off. I, was, I don't no, even no, no. do that because I think the best way to start is just start whatever the current run is, there you go. And if you want to get <laughs> interested in those stories, that's right. where that's, you can right. delve into that. Right. Yeah. I feel no, like I, that's with yeah. anything. I agree. And you don't come up to somebody and say, hey, man, you have to play all the other 15 Final Fantasies <laughs> to understand Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> no, just play the one that's out now. And if you like, if you like it, go yeah, play it. Yeah, it's like Fast and the Furious. Yeah. You don't got to yeah. watch like Tokyo Drift. <laughs> Uh, but you, you do have to watch that's Tokyo Drift. That's, that's, that's probably the only one you have to watch. Yeah. That's a <laughs> you know, Sorry, sorry Trevor, oh. you had a question? Oh, I think I was going to say about, like, geez, Fast and the Furious got me sidetracked. <laughs> 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 or just, we should talk about Fast and the Furious, all of them, but it's a conference for another day. But oh, I remember what I was going to say. So I was going to say just, like, when you talk about some of the killing joke, I feel like, you know, like, with a lot of these stories, like dude, we're, I feel like we're treating DC stories like in scope, like they're so wide. But like some of the Killing Joke, like I feel like you know you could take a guess at who Batgirl is because <laughs> at this point she's not paralyzed yet, so you don't need to. Like this is the story for pretty sure. much every other sure. Batman Batgirl story for 15 years, right, or you know right. with Jason Todd, you know. So it's just I feel like no, I agree. I, so agree. I feel like I do think DC like has like a little bit of a like barrier. But I think like I think the a lot of like those the stories you're talking about where it's like, oh, go back to this story. Like if you go back to Nightfall, they have like a bought like the collections of these stories. So you can go back and like even like the clone saga has like a collection. So like the story is there. There's might be like auxiliary information from around that thing that you may not know. But you can still just like pick it up, you know what I'm saying? So that's sure. that's what I want to say. Sure. No, I, I get that. Um I have a question for Ali. Yeah. So we have been talking about um, Marvel and DC and like big expansive universes where you're reading uh, what Drakari talked about earlier and you're reading um, Invincible, which is an indie comic published specifically by Image Comics, where that is extremely linear. There is only one uh, pathway to read those comics, and that's from issue one through what issue, I don't know what issue they're on, but... Do you think that I know we asked you would you choose Marvel or DC to start, but do would you recommend starting indie before starting Marvel or DC? Hmm. I don't know because there's there's a lot of indie stories out there. If there's like, I'm I'm trying to say that there's so many stories that. It can be overwhelming, like even then yeah, trying it, to pick it, a comic to read. Right. Yeah. You know which ones are going to be good, which ones aren't. 
exactly I think that's just yeah. issue with comics in general like i know we're sure. treating it kind of like a more this is it's such a like i i know we kind of briefly talked about manga but i feel like it's why manga is so much more like i think it's why people have an easier time saying okay i'm gonna read this manga and i'm gonna read this comic because like like obviously manga has a lot of genres and a lot of stories but it's like some of these books are only like 12 volumes or something like that they're maybe like and that's it these stories are like super contained because even like i said even these indie stories like i know valiant has like a whole intertwined universe and that's like a indie comic like uh so it's just like a lot of stuff manga where it's like okay here's naruto here's like then this is it this is just naruto like it may be 700 volumes but this is it <laughs> you know what i'm saying whereas like with complex it's like you can read this but like i like how i started reading power rangers there's so many like other power ranger stories going on right now it's like shattered grid and then like pink ranger story over here red ranger story over there so it's just like Is shattered grid the fighting game yeah i think so yeah i think i think Sorry. but there's still a story called shattered grid though oh okay i was confused for a second i was like i need to come up with the power <laughs> ranger fighting game called that same okay. thing yeah it's the it's where tommy becomes a uh, lord draken just... gotcha okay all right um and so, do you? I, I definitely think that manga versus comics should be a separate issue, uh, a separate uh, mm -hmm. episode, because yeah. there is so much to say. Yeah, um, I want to specifically focus this episode on comics. Um, <clears throat> sorry, yeah. on comics. Do you guys think that we've pretty much exhausted the written adaptation and should move on to film, or do you have anything more to say about written comics? <gasps> Um, I, I have a, a couple more things to say okay, about reading comics. Ahead. One thing I will say, <laughs> I'm talking, I'm talking. Um, <laughs> the one thing I, I, I will say about comics is I, I feel like a part of the issue with the comics is the community as well. Oh, people absolutely. are always fighting over which adaptation yes. is the best. Yeah. It's like none of that is conclusive because everybody's like, oh, well, my favorite adaptation is also the best adaptation. I'm like, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. Like if it, my favorite, if my favorite adaptation of Spider Man was still around. We'd we'd have three Spider Men patrolling around New York and Kane, Ben Riley, Peter Parker all the time. Peter Parker. No Miles. No Miles. No Miles. Screw Miles. Miles sucks. He's in his own universe. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him. Miles, go away. I was really cool. You're really cool because of, of Peter Parker. Oh. Bang. Oh, yeah, I'm the I, I like Miles in the MC, or not the MC, but in the main continuity. I think that was a good change. And black now, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I prefer, um, I, I think that's a big conversation that a lot of people tend to miss out on. And I think that's part of the problems we have in the comic community, too. Yeah, um, I think that's just like, I think that's, that's part of fandom in general, though. Because even, well, yeah. I would say fandom in general, because like, I've never heard about controversies like in the Sailor Moon community, but <laughs> but like I definitely feel like but yeah, I just feel like comics comic book community, it's just like some people just get really defensive about these characters and how they're viewed. It's just like even the guy who's writing Spider Man right now, like oh, what's his name? Zeph Wells or something like that or whatever. Yeah. That guy's getting tore up. <laughs> they're tearing up, they're uh, lighting him up. He's he's cream, man. Did you guys love Spider Boy? <laughs> he he wrote Spider Boy. Yeah, that was him. Oh boy, he's a, he's taking those lessons right. But yeah, like we were saying, it's just like the community is just like the community makes it hard because sometimes the community is not free. I remember when I was a little kid trying to figure out like stuff, and they're just like, it, just pick one up, kid. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't answer my question about where to start. But yeah, the community isn't always the best. So okay, okay, um, so let's switch into uh film and television mm -hmm. film and television yeah, yeah. Film and television. yeah. all right so what do you guys think is the easiest barrier i know we've talked a little bit about it but easiest barrier to entry i know Chikari, you think it's mcu i don't think we got ali or jason's um opinion on that uh it's the bloodshot universe because there's only <laughs> one movie <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> And don't you just love Mark Sinclair on his legal? Oh, oh yes, yes. Well, you remember they're trying to because Bloodshot's a part of the Valiant universe, so they're trying to get that going for a little bit. Yeah, but the Bloodshot movie did so bad, and Sony yeah. was the people who owned the Valiant universe, but they just let all the laps, all the rights <laughs> laps, 
Yeah. Tell me, like, man, we don't want this. We're just gonna make our oh, we're not getting an EXO Man of War movie. How unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, no okay. EXO Man of War. Okay, all right. Well, Jason, what do you think is the uh, lowest barrier to entry? Um, that was my answer. No, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> DC. No, I think DC currently has the lower battle level of entry just because there's less of them, and right. half of them can be ignored. <laughs> um, so right. You no, have like, that, that you, got Man of Steel. Well. Yeah, you got Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Aquaman, and that's pretty much it. Wonder Woman. Right. And and you even, can pretty much start back with those. <laughs> um, but I mean, even with your joke about um, Bloodshot, I mean, DC, especially when it comes to film and television, they like to do what they're calling Elseworlds, where they're looking like uh, Todd Phillips' Joker or Matt Reeves' The Batman, where these are separate universes where you don't have to worry about anything else that DC's making because these are their own self-contained stories. There's going to be, obviously, Joker Part 2 is coming out, and then the Batman 2 is coming out. And so, like, those are going to be their own storylines and maybe even trilogies. But I think that's the lowest barrier to entry where you have one or two films to watch in order to watch the whole thing, you know? Versus Marvel, where everything is connected even their television shows. Well, well not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> <laughs> it was for the first um, season. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Jason and Alex. With, with DC, you don't really need to watch all of, all of those movies to, like, really get what's going on. And, like, the, the TV shows are, like, a different universe as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. with Marvel, um, I don't think you really need to watch all of them, but I feel like there is just a little bit that you're going to miss if you don't watch the movies that came before. Right. Yeah. No, yeah, um, that is that is that is really what I was trying to say. And I know um, Trikari was saying that they do a good enough job covering it, but I don't think they do. Yeah, I definitely think yeah. in the newer films, any anything that has to do with the multiverse or timelines, awful <laughs> there it makes no sense <laughs> but i think like in those early films like like if you watch civil war you get a good idea of who ant-man is you get a good idea of who black panther is. well i think isn't black panther introduced in civil war but yeah either yeah. way yeah. You get like yeah so you get like a good idea here's this character here's this character and same in kind of in game it's i think they do a really good job in infinity war of like combining it's like I think Infinity War is probably the best Avengers film because like they just do I think they do that's when they do the best job of saying okay here are all these characters and like here's their personality here's a little bit of info about them and that's really like it'd be cool if you watch all this other stuff that led up to this moment but you can still like gather who these characters are through these moments like I just think you I, I think all these kind of right where you just like you miss out on like just extra information and like stuff that might be cool and no I would say just stuff but like some there is a lot of like necessary stuff in some films but like i think i think you'll be good so far it's because it's like you didn't need to watch ant-man and the wasp to figure out the time travel like it would have been cool if you did but like you didn't need to right you know right no so. yeah i agree i agree um yeah, i do I have should... a oh sorry go ahead oh i was just saying that was my opinion oh okay um i do have a question for ali though where you said that your film and television is really the DC animated universe, that umbrella um, universe, which is fairly similar to the MCU where there's, if I'm not mistaken, it's like over 10 titles now, which are all connected. And so do you think that, I know they've reset that and ended that universe, but do you think that's still a high enough barrier to entry? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Just because, like, it takes it takes a lot of time to get through through all of that, and kind of have to be dedicated. But um, I do have a quick. I don't know. I've also I've also watched like a a lot of like video essays on these like those series. So I feel like that's another route that people could go if they really wanted to, but they don't didn't want to like take the time to really dive deep into into those right no yeah Jakari, you had a question i was just, so when we're talking about the animated stuff are we talking about like 
like the early 2000s, like the Batman the anime series, like the just through through like the Justice League, like the can? early 2000s. No, stuff. Um, we can, which um, those are also connected, starting with animated series, then going to Justice League, and then Batman Beyond, and then Justice League Unlimited okay. are all I'll, one I'll series. Don't forget the Superman the anime. So you're animated right, series. Superman the animated series. Yeah, I mean, cause, it's just because you said static, because Static Shock was a part of it, because there's a few yes, crossovers. Yes, right. Static Shock is part of that. Um, yeah, but no, a Ali problems. was specifically talking about a separate universe which DC had set up. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about like, that so, was okay, that was I the one I... that started with the Flashpoint Paradox movie? Oh, okay. So you're talking about the okay. I get what you're saying. Saying. Okay. A Court of Owls and all those type of. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. That, yeah, yeah. Justice yeah. League versus Justice saying. League Dark, all those films. Justice League versus Teen Titans, Teen Titans, Judas Contract. <laughs> you know what I don't like in those movies? You know Damien is dating Raven in those movies now instead of Beast Boy? Well, those movies are over, but yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> I, I kind of preferred it because they, because they, the Beast Boy didn't exist in that because Beast Boy was in Young Justice. So they were not. Oh, they didn't use right. Boy. Another thing oh. is Young Justice is somehow like very close to the DC animated universe, but separate enough where it's different. Yeah. Yeah. The first I think two I think Young Justice for fire. I think uh, Robin and Raven, their their personalities are a lot similar, so it makes sense for them to to be dating. Yeah, right. Well, like said, the, but, yeah. the thing about it is that in the comics, Raven is like thirty years old, <laughs> so it'd be they're perfect. Yeah, the Teen uh, Titans about thirty five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. Um, but yes, DC does have more series than just that. E- even if you're looking at, I mean, I don't know. First thing that comes to my head is Batman: The Brave and the Bold, which is its own standalone thing and kind of yeah. introduces you to almost every character, right? Yeah, dude. Um, That's how uh, Blue Beetle got super popular. Yeah, yeah, because yep. of his adaptation and through that, right? Yep. That was the first the time most... we saw Jaime, Jaime Reyes. Yeah, that's the adaptation that's the most popular and the one that's always like every adaptation since then has adapted it from the brave and the bold version of himself. Right, right. But yeah, there uh, DC has had a lot of interconnected things in the past. Um, but I still think that when it uh, comparing it to Marvel, it's it pales in comparison. Yeah, Marvel I mean, has no enemy. Um, they what if, but. Was bad. What if? Um, I mean, <laughs> back in the day, they had Marvel Superhero Squad. Oh yeah, Marvel. Marvel's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They also had the Avengers animated series. X Men Evolution. Yes, you know, X Men Evolution. Evolution. Yes, yes. Yeah. Not, nothing spectacular. X Men Evolution. None of that is better than the '90s, like Batman the animated series. That's true. Yeah. Like. Well, I mean, I, I mean Marvel, yeah, I don't. I, today's episode is not about which series, which um universe is better, Marvel or DC. It's which one's easiest to get into. I well, if we're talking about easiest to get into, if you're an adult, I would say it's DC, right? Because right. DC has their storytelling is a lot better than those '90s animated shows. But uh, even the stuff they had in the mid 2000s, um, and going into the later 2000s, Marvel stuff has always been focused on the kids you guys remember the ultimate universe animated movies where they were there fighting the chitauri aliens are there ultimate universe animated movies yeah yeah and so there's three of them and they oh, fight the chitauri are shapeshifters and they take control of the nazi army from world war ii mm-hmm. captain america fights them and he gets frozen in ice it's about like iron man discovering them it's called ultimate avengers but they're not only version of the character who's the ultimate universe version of themselves is the Hulk. Because he's mm-hmm. like a cannibal and grayish green. <laughs> yeah. Um those have been they had the third one where Ultron won and killed everybody and then their kids had to defeat, defeat Ultron and Black Widow. Oh, you're about the Young Avengers movie? Yeah, so but the Young Avengers movie was a third of that trilogy. There's two Ultimate oh, Avengers uh, movies. I knew yeah. Young Avengers I didn't know there was like more of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, there was three, and that was like that was like the only good Marvel animated stuff I can remember. I mean, spectacular I Spider-Man mean, is great. There's been a lot. Of, um, I think there's been a lot. Are you like outside of the movies? I think there's been a lot. You know, the the Thor versus Hulk movies, Thor versus um, or is it Hulk? It's Hulk, Hulk versus, versus Wolverine. Uh, Hulk versus yeah. Thor. Um, I mean, there's a Black 
Black Widow and Punisher anime foul size Wolverine. Yeah, and yeah, the an- the anime stuff they did, the Black Panther um BET cartoon they did with a uh, Digimon Hutsu was pretty good. I remember. Oh, yeah, I I remember the, that. yeah, it was. Yeah, they were super dope. I liked that a lot. But I think Marvel's animated stuff. I think I don't know if they've done too much recent anim- anime stuff just because like oh, all Disney of their anime stuff is now being forced to be part of the MCU. Yeah, which, I also which hate. sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, a lot of their stuff that is separate is older, and something that completely slipped my mind was all, just how many Spider-Man series there are. There's a ton of them, right? And they're all separate. Right. Yeah, um, they're all uh, separate, and only three of them are good. Yeah. Um, which, but three? I think, oh, oh, okay, oh, which, which three? Which three? Which three? Right, which which three? three? Okay, number one, 90s animated Spider-Man. Chris Will Daniel True. Barnes was on that stuff. Is that crack. including the Amazing Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends that series? <laughs> no, no, that's Dude, literally Spider- just Spider-Man the animated series. Okay. <laughs> rock, rock intro, Spider-Man. Spy- All right. Anyways, and then um, second favorite would probably be Spectacular Spider-Man. I think um, I'll look at the Ultimate Spider-Man show as flowers. I think the Ultimate Spider-Man show did a good job of introducing other Was characters. Drake Bell? Yeah, I think that show did a really good job of introducing other characters into the Spider-Man lore. So like, I don't think it I've had before. <laughs> yeah, so like, if you watch that, Luke Cage is in that show. No, I'm not. I've seen very... the show. It's just yeah. I didn't think it was good. <laughs> no, I, I, I think out of out of some of the other stuff, Spider-Man stuff. I mean, do you think the new animated series with what is it? New um, Patrick Harris. Yeah, with MPH as Peter yeah, Parker. I like, the, I like that. That was good. It only had ten episodes. That show was garbage Still. with a crappy three D animation. <laughs> it was yeah, it somewhat was connected to the um Sam Raimi movies. It was pretty. It was you know whatever. No, the best tie into the Sam Raimi movies was that PSP game called Spider Man <laughs> Friend or Four, Friend or Foe. Sorry, Friend or Foe, which was the unofficial yeah. fourth movie. Right. There's a um new like duper duper like it's like for super little kids spider-man show with like miles and gwen and stuff and oh Parker. yeah but it changed I, miles miles like spider name. tots or something, something like that <laughs> uh, yeah, it's called spider friends or something like that and they changed right. miles morales's name to spidey oh it's because so about... they don't want the little kids to be confused when confused. there's two spider-men yeah. gotcha. i don't think the kids are that slow <laughs> <laughs> well you never know some of them are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but one thing that we have completely uh, let slip by us is for someone who wants to get into superhero films today, they're, they're saying, today I want to start watching uh, superhero films. I, I want to know what's the lowest barrier to entry. They don't want to go back and watch stuff that's already come out. It's going to be DC simply for the fact where... Just like the comics, DC is doing a total reboot of all of their um, uh, entire storyline through James Gunn's direction. And that's mm-hmm. starting this year, where uh, starting with, I believe, Superman Legacy, if I'm not mistaken, and we'll basically old. retelling origin stories of all their characters and creating a new shared universe okay. just like the MCU. But they are completely starting over and i would say that is without a doubt the lowest barrier to entry yeah that's true yeah. Well, I, I don't think we get another origin story for for superman for them. absolutely yeah. not like, we yeah from uh, yes i yeah from what i've seen james gunn said it's not a superman origin story it's a clark kent origin story but i don't know what the difference what? of that is what that, it's oh what's what's that, that that's Dude, that's PR talk if I've ever heard. Bro, just go watch Smallville. <laughs> Dude, oh, that is, every time I hear something about a Superman origin story, I'm like, just watch the first episode of Smallville and you'll get it. Just, exactly. just, just 45 minutes and you'll get all of Superman. Yeah. Oh my god, all dude. Right. James is a Yeah, so here's my... I, oh, okay, no, go ahead. Uh, okay, I was trying. I, I was going to say, I think some characters need to have their origin story. I, I feel like it, like biggest complaint about spider-man is that he, they didn't have uncle ben there but yeah. the most important part of super spider-man's character is uncle ben yeah so to not have him there yeah. kind of defeats the purpose of the character but for yeah. somebody like yeah. superman I was like man screw it dude like i don't even... <laughs> yeah his whole planet blow it's like seeing batman's parents get shot from the tenth time yeah I'm i think tired. Even, even with spider-man you don't even have to show like you can just like 
because like even like the cartoons a lot of the cartoons don't just like they're not like uncle they just reference that uncle ben is dead and you get the point so right. we don't like yes that's all you can know and then with superman he, he landed in uh smallville and now raised he's human that's it <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, was, he was raised right by some good old Americans. Exactly. Good old Southern Americans. That's right. Um, Get her done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I do have a question to end this episode off. Um, kind of going completely off topic from what we were talking about. So, DC, I think we can agree DC right now is going to be the lowest barrier to entry in terms of film. But the question is. Do you want to enter DC right now? Does it sound no. like it's going to be interesting? Like the movies? Um, or like the movies? Yeah. James Gunn's new uh, DC Universe um, so titled, think, what? I, honestly, Chapter One, Gods and Monsters. I, honestly, for me... Right oh, sorry. You can call me. Yeah. Uh, honestly, for me, I, I've i just been staying away from DC just because, like, <laughs> just, see, just watching the trailers, I'm like, this isn't something I'm interested in. Like, I didn't watch um, Justice League until... Like a couple weeks ago, when y'all recommended it, yeah. like oh, I, I, the word I would use. <laughs> well, when, when y'all talked about it, when y'all talked about it, <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> no, I think we did. Um, it. <laughs> <laughs> we still gotta watch Tiny Soldiers. <laughs> oh man, yeah. yeah, but I have a list of his film just in case, like anyone needs to be refreshed on what he's coming out with. Is that, do you think that'd be helpful at all? I would or? love that, yes. Okay, so for DC, his new DC movies, we are getting, as you said, Superman Legacy, which will be written by Gunn. And We're directed getting a... by Gunn. Oh, yeah, Andrew. Oh, man, that's going to suck. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> James, whatever, we'll give it to it. But The Authority, <laughs> who are awful and not, if you want to know it, if also you want to. written by Gunn. James, which, if you want to watch The Authority, just watch the boys and you will get the and you'll probably have a better experience yeah but um yeah. the brave and the bull which will be directed by andy Musiashi. Musi- yeah. Musi- <laughs> and that's going to be about batman and robin um what you ruined the flash specifically so. grant morrison's run of batman and robin where mm-hmm. batman is gone at this point and dick grayson so has dick Gray- stepped in mm-hmm. as to become Batman. you think they're gonna actually do dick grayson or are they just gonna call it brave and bold and do bruce wayne from the picture they shared um like all of the uh, like teasing stuff they showed it's like straight up images from brave and the bold that comic series okay okay that could i think that could be interesting and then the last two movies they're doing are supergirl woman of tomorrow which is going to be based on tom king's like this it's his most recent supergirl it's like it's won a bunch of awards it's like a beautiful comic book art is beautiful stories it's basically just supergirl traveling around space helping people but um that's gonna be a movie um they haven't said anything about who's directing it or who uh, is starring in it and then a character i like but apparently is boring Swamp Thing. <laughs> Swamp Thing is boring, but we can get Swamp to that later. <laughs> and then for Swamp TV Thing needs his Immortal Hulk treatment, is what he needs. Yeah, you know, he already has that. No, no, he doesn't. I'm so sorry, but you feel that way. Uh, Swamp Thing, <laughs> people pull up and they're like, Swamp Thing, we ruined the environment, we need your help. And he goes, green, and then everything's fixed, and he goes back into the swamp. And then for TV shows, we're getting the Creature Commandos, which I've never heard of. Um, That's gonna suck. It's just another um, Suicide Squad for James Gunn to do whatever he wants to. Um, we're getting a Waller show, which what would you even do in Amanda? Waller? Her whole thing is that she leads the Suicide Squad, so what? Whatever. I think that would be pretty good. I don't know. I mean, I mean like Drakari said, the whole thing is that Waller's job is to sit at a desk and not do anything. Yeah. We're gonna watch her do I mean, paperwork you, all day. He's gonna drag out Davis, Davis. So. Well, like I feel like there's going to be some dramatic uh, uh, meetings with, like, generals or the president <laughs> or whoever. Yeah. This could be, like, She's going to be the wing. only person who knows about yeah. the Yeah. Honestly, that doesn't, now that you're pitching it. <laughs> that, 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 could be a, that, that could be, like, I would, I would watch, like, one yeah. episode of that, but not a whole show. A whole show, okay. Uh, Booster Gold, which I don't hate because I like Booster Gold. I'm so. excited for that one. Yeah, it depends on have, who they cast. Oh, gotta have... Who do you think they should cast? I don't know, but I mean, no, you got to get the right person to pay Booster Gold. That's true. That's true. That's true. We're getting a 
Green Lantern show that's going to star Hal Jordan and John Stewart. And yeah. 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 Is that Which, animated? I can't remember. Um, it's supposed to be if I remember correctly. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Don't going back to Booster it. Gold, I think Chris Pratt could do a good Booster Gold. And I know James Gunn has already oh, spoken, no! has already spoken with no! him about doing another role for him, but <laughs> I know that's controversial that really because good. that's kind of like all Chris Pratt does. But I do think he could do a good job. Honestly, Alan Rick- Rickson is that how you say his name? Alan Rickson. Yeah, yeah, he could be a good Booster Gold. I think he's too he's big. I, I think so. Well, I mean, he kind of fits the part of a guy who's pretending to be a superhero. You know, when he's not. Yeah, actually. that's true. That's true. Okay, and then the last one that is talked about is Paradise Lost, which Ooh. is going to be a Game of Thrones s version of Themyscira, which makes no sense, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to think that James Gunn <laughs> doesn't understand these characters as much as he says he does. No, I mean, oh, wow. he so said that he doesn't does like mainstream that? characters. Yeah, he said that. So he so so he's going to just ruin the mainstream characters instead. Guess, no, he's going to make the popular characters not mainstream. They're all going to be Star Lord, which is so exciting. <laughs> oh, is is that exciting? Is it because I, I, mean, I you know I like Guardians of the Galaxy three, but I, not because I like Chris Pratt. Yeah, yeah. Chris Pratt and Booster Gold is crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, Alex, you're. I'm gonna I, kick you the podcast no, I think for that I think you do a great job. I I mean. Just think of the character of Star Lord and think of the character of Booster yeah. Gold. They're the same character. He can oh, do a um, he could do yeah. a pretty good typecast version, but he'd be <laughs> mediocre. He wouldn't do anything great. Oh, James Gunn has also said, and this is another one that I guess I'm really excited for. But Blue Beetle is also going to be a part of his universe. Right, which is I think he said that's yeah. only if it's good, though. I think that's only if it's good. <laughs> only if that it's movie good. does well. Uh, I, mean, I don't think I think he's already. Philosophy. It's already doing like I think mock reviews have been terrible for it. Yeah, it's projected to be like one of the lowest films of DC's career, which is low. Which is low. Hard to beat the Flash, man. Yeah. Yeah. I I almost walked out of the movie theater watching the Flash. But okay, so I think I know Trikari's answer of, um, would you wanna uh, join in on DC at this moment? As no, but Jason (laughs) Ali, what do you say? I'll let Ali go first. Wait, what was the question again? Hearing all those titles laid out, knowing that this is your chance to hop in if you want to, are you? I will. I will. <laughs> just to... If, if not anything, just, just so I can, like, relate to y'all, because I know y'all are going to watch it. Oh. Yeah, You're right, I am going to watch it. Saying, Hold on. He's being forced. He's going to be Forced. I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm not saying I'm being forced. <laughs> I, I think I will enjoy it. Yeah. Well, some of it, but <laughs> we'll we'll I'll see. We'll see. Thing. I'll watch Swamp Thing for sure. Uh, oh, man. Um, oh, man. All right. Yeah. I'll watch them when they get uploaded to HBO Max. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll watch. I'll watch Swamp, Swamp Thing when it gets uploaded to HBO. Hold on, hold on. Thank you, thank you. Million dollars in boxes. Where it is going to be because of me. So <laughs> that movie's going to make a billion dollars on the box office. It's going to be because Chikari watched it ten thousand exactly. times. If they put me on the marketing team for Swamp Thing, it's making a billion dollars. Okay. <laughs> it's just gonna, just All, right. My All right. All right. Uh, real quick, anything else anybody wants to say about barrier to entry to uh, comics and their adaptations? Um, the last thing I'll say is comic books are fun. Um, just like I just recommend, like honestly, like whatever looks cool is the best to start with, man. Because like we I know we've been talking about the universe and multiverse and all that stuff, but ultimately it's just like whatever looks cool, whatever like you just like, hey, this is interesting. Just pick it up and see if you like it. Yep, no, I agree. I agree. All right. Well, I think that's a good place to end this episode for today. Thank you guys, everybody, for listening. This was episode six of our thoughts on this. Next week, we've been teasing this for a very long time, but finally, (laughs) Zack Snyder. I know it was supposed to be this week, but something came up. We couldn't, we uh, just couldn't film that today. But next week will be Zack Snyder. So stay tuned. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all for listening. Goodbye. Oh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at OTOTPod. And threads. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. I try try to be funny on threads. Uh, Lowest on kick.
<laughs> all talking about Fraser Street. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, I was talking about other numbers. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, don't follow us on Kick. All right, all right, everybody. Thank you guys for listening. Bye. Bye. Love you.